is me. Hello, I'm Leonie. I love reading. Books, novels, fiction. I love words. But I'm not very experienced with reading poetry. Here's a poem that sums up my experience with it. Ah, what is this? I don't get it. Yeah, I think the quality of that poem kind of says it all. <laughs> but recently I got a poetry book from a friend at a book swap, which I talked about in my recent reading vlog. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna tackle this, I'm gonna have my first time reading poetry. And it's gonna be so, so confusing, I already know that. So I thought it would be fun to kind of take you with me on the ride as I dabble into poetry, jump along poems and see what I think of it. Maybe there's a hidden goddess of language inside of me that will come out as I read this. And maybe instead of a goddess, it's just a little god that just wants to go home and read YA fantasy. What makes this poetry collection special is that it's actually a story that is told in over about 70 poems. So I thought this would be the perfect bridge between prose and poetry for me. In short, this book is about a town that is occupied by the ministry and when one of the soldiers shoots a deaf boy, the entirety of the town goes deaf as well. So let's get into it. I'm just gonna start this and see what I think of it. <coughs> <coughs> what I immediately noticed is that the first poem <laughs> already immediately confuses me. I'm not gonna go through all the poems because this video will be way too long. Just a little warning, I am not at all someone that's good <laughs> at presenting poetry and reading it aloud, but the introductory poem goes like this. We lived happily during the war, and when they bombed other people's houses, we protested, but not enough. We post them, but not enough. I was in my bed, around my bed America, was falling. Invisible house by invisible house by invisible house. I took a chair outside and watched the sun. In the sixth month of a disastrous rain, in the house of money, in the street of money, in the city of money, and in the country of money, our great country of money, we, forgive us, lived happily during the war. Kind of very sad and sentimental about the feeling of living in war, but life still going on. I just don't get why all the enters. Pivotal to poetry is just sentence cutoffs in the middle of the sentence and I never understand why. <laughs> I mean I understand in first place it's for emphasis you know like and when they bombed other people's houses we protested. So the word protested is emphasized. We oppose them but not enough. Emphasis on enough but then the next sentence is still half on that line is it because it now creates the sentence that says enough i was which maybe is like to create the illusion of the sentence i was enough maybe i don't know you know in high school we had literature class and the teacher would explain to you what every symbolism meant and what every little word meant and then you understood it and i was always like wow really did not see that one coming but if you're reading it by yourself I don't know what this is supposed to mean. I'll never know the correct interpretation. I don't know. Maybe after I read this book for a little bit, I'll understand the correct interpretation. Maybe there is no correct interpretation. Who knows? I don't. All of you people watching who like to read poetry are probably all rolling your eyes and face palming collectively. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very confused. <sighs> So I'm basically now at the point where Pecha, who is the young deaf boy that was shot, everyone in the city starts becoming deaf. And one of the two main characters, Sonia, very sad, a very sad moment, she's like grieving over him. And it says here, Sonia kisses his forehead, her shout a hole torn in the sky. It shimmers the park benches, porch lights. We see Sonia's open mouth, the nakedness of a whole nation. While I'm reading, I very often notice that I'm very confused with a sentence until I realize that it actually continues on the next line. Like for example, it says, Sonia kisses his forehead, her shout a hole. And I'm very confused about that because it's like her shout a hole. Her mouth just open so much that it's like a black hole, I don't know. Then it continues and you see that it's actually her shout a hole torn in the sky. And I'm like, oh, well, that makes sense. Now I understand it. But the cutoff, though, it confuses me. <laughs> Although I guess maybe that's the point to kind of create this 
visual of her open mouth and then also her shout a hole torn in the sky because it's so loud her shout a hole torn in the sky would be a very nice sentence that i can imagine seeing in just a prose novel of fiction using the word hole would just be very accurate word choice that really gives you the right visualization while you're reading it but this is not prose it's poetry so it has to be emphasized that there's ambiguity in the use of the words by a line cut so here's the part where everyone goes deaf and i thought that was really pretty so i'm just gonna i'm gonna read it a country woke up the next morning and refused to hear soldiers. In the name of Pecha, we refuse. Pecha is the little boy who was shot. So the fact that they're all deaf, it's very clearly like a symbolism for the fact that they're just refusing to answer to the soldiers anymore. And it's very clear that them being deaf is supposed to be like an allegory, a symbolism, a metaphor. I know that somehow all those words mean different things, but I'm not quite sure where the difference is. But it's very clear that the deafness is like, a symbolism <laughs> for the resistance. Hello, Shichirleoni here. Uh, at this point, I did not yet realize that I was wrong. You know, they say our hearing doesn't weaken, but something silent in us strengthens. I like that. I'm still very confused though. Like often there's just these huge little paragraphs and I'm like, the hell does this mean? <laughs> also, the friend who I got this from made like little annotations in the book, underlined things that he liked, I'm assuming. And he also lined this part, but I don't, I have absolutely no idea what the heck it means. So clearly I'm missing something, <laughs> but they're saying our main character is like running away from the soldiers. And he says, whoever listens, thank you for the feather on my tongue. Thank you for our arguments that end. Thank you for deafness. Lord, such fire from a match you never lit. It's like, I can see. These are pretty words in a pretty order, but I have absolutely no idea what the heck it means. Like a feather on the tongue? What is that? Such fire from a match you never lit. So it's a fire, but no one ignited it? Maybe it's like he's saying, thank you for the, our argument that ends. Thank you for deafness. Maybe he's talking about how, because they're all deaf they're not arguing with each other anymore and now all the time townspeople can start working together in solidarity but it still doesn't explain the feather on the tongue maybe the feather on the tongue is like that they're not talking anymore so there's a feather on your tongue i don't know see this is the thing it's like I'll never have the answer. I can speculate all I want, but I'll never actually know what the heck this is supposed to mean. I don't like that. So now we get to a multitude of poems that like describe how the dead boy that was shot, Pecha, is just laying there on town square. And he's described as his face on the asphalt, a map of bone and opened valves. Ooh, that's a gory description, but I, I do kind of like it. It could be a YA title, right? The map of bone and open valves. I, I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> but then there's also lines like the body of the boy lies on the asphalt like a paperclip. What? Like... I am enjoying this. It's very sad and melancholic, like how this boy is just laying there on the town's place, on like the town square and the people who love him like lay next to him in the snow as if he's still like someone to be embraced and then they all like rise up and when the soldiers come they start like forming this circle around Pecha to guard him from the soldiers who want to take away his body but they won't let them the townspeople lock arms to form a circle and another circle around that circle and another circle to keep the soldiers from the boy's body we watch Sonia stand the child inside her straightens its leg someone has given her a sign which she holds above her head the people are deaf so like I said, I can tell that this deafness is like a, a metaphor for like the solidarity because they've suddenly all become deaf. I think, I think this is what it means. I don't know and I'll never know for sure. Nope, you can actually know like I just did by just looking up a review <laughs> in the newspaper. I think it's like a metaphor for the solidarity and that they are now all standing up 
against these soldiers and a little later the soldiers start nailing announcements on posts and doors that says deafness is a contagious disease for your own protection all subjects in contaminated areas must surrender to be quarantined within 24 hours like they say that the deafness is contagious in the same way maybe <laughs> as i think rebelliousness and solidarity is contagious because a large group of people suddenly decide to stand up and stand for something it is contagious because you thought maybe you were alone in your thoughts and your discontent and now that you see other people are standing up you are more willing to join them this could be a really cool YA dystopian I'll tell you but beside those beautiful nice passages there's also a few poems of our main male character Alfonso who is married to Sonia and he has these like very weird poems about how much he loves her <laughs> talking about her breasts in her hand to small explosions I did like this though I am not a poet Sonia I want to live in your hair <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> also this that I'm just not even gonna read out loud not a fan of that maybe maybe I'm missing the deeper meaning and it's somehow about how his like visceral animalistic feelings for her are like a symbol for his deep emotions his love for her is cosmic and it comes from the innermost parts of the earth and it's the beginning of evolution <laughs> maybe I'll never know my wife's painted fingernail scratches and scratches the skin of her leg and I feel the hardness of bone underneath at one point he shortly talks about walking into my barbershop of thoughts and I'm not quite sure what he means with that but I can just see how that would make like the cutest like illustration or little short story I can just imagine like a magical barber and someone walks in with like all his thoughts are like swirling around his head like a visual representation of what he's thinking about and he's like barber you have to help me i'm thinking about so much things and a barber is like oh sit down and he like cuts all his thoughts away and then it's like well now you have a clear mind again i know that's probably not what kaminsky meant with that but i can really just see that it would make a really cool kick to pj video let me tell you <laughs> Hello again, excuse me for the lack of natural lighting, it's dark outside. I only read poetry in the depths and darkness of the night. Actually, it's only 6am, it's just winter. I've been reading some more and I'm enjoying this, I can tell you that. I'm definitely having fun, but just like a lot of things, I'm having fun whilst also being very confused at everything that's happening. <laughs> so Sonia and Alfonso just had a child and they wrote a very cute lullaby little daughter rainwater snow and branches protect you whitewashed walls and neighbor's hands all child of my aprils little earth of six pounds my white hair keeps your sleep lit i enjoyed that i like how the setting is set with the snow and the branches protecting you the whitewashed walls the imagery of my white hair keeps your sleep lit i like that but then also a neighbor's hands all child of my aprils what <laughs> little earth of six pounds how much is six pounds oh okay so that's almost two kilograms maybe like a child a newborn baby could be three kilograms right it could be six pounds right maybe they're talking about the child because the child is their entire world right now maybe that's what they mean with little earth of six pounds but the neighbor's hands all child of my aprils was she born in april maybe and why are the neighbor's hands all child of my aprils i do have to say that i sometimes come across a small poem that i really like that really makes me feel something but i cannot really precisely explain what it means like for example this one I really enjoyed it is question what is a child a quiet between two bombardments it's short but it's nice because it's simple and sad a little bit of hope I like it but I'm not I'm not quite sure I cannot like explain to you why exactly a child would be a quiet between two bombardments but I do like it and maybe I just have to lean into that feeling Oh. he says you left my door slamming wife and I a fool live 
I like it, you know, when in fiction, when someone has, like, lost someone or maybe they broke up or they miss someone and they, like, call out a bad or, like, flawed character trait of the person and say it in, like, a loving way, like, oh, my door-slamming wife. I like that. So far, the fact that I'm confused all the time still is both the infuriating part and the thing that keeps me enjoyed. I am experiencing a kind of fun in the fact that I'm trying to pick apart every word, trying to understand if there's some like hidden treasure. I feel like I'm digging through the words like an archaeologist trying to find dinosaur bones. Poetry. Day 255. I am still uncultured. Okay. <laughs> Let's continue. You can see me in the mirror. Um, let's not do that. I'm now on page 40, so that's a little over half of it. Sometimes there's these really long poems, and it's especially at these moments that I'm asking myself the question, at what point is something prose and at what point is it poetry? It's just a story with enterkeys. Basically, they're talking about now the town for the first time is executing one of the soldiers. So, you know, the first the first bit of actual rebellion and fighting back and it's written in a way that's pretty much as if you would read fiction except again with a lot of enter keys pressed in there and it's really nice except I'm still confused about the point of all the line breaks and all the enters I write poetry like I write prose except I enter the story more Poetry. I'm really not trying to make fun of poetry here. I know it sounds like that. It's just my coping mechanisms for not understanding anything. There's a beautiful small passage at the moment that they execute the soldiers. The townspeople do that. And it says, at the trial of God, we will ask, why did you allow all this? And the answer will be an echo. Why did you allow all this? But then there's also these moments where I really don't understand what's happening, like when they're saying, I light a lamp so as not to see. How does that work? I've noticed so far, the poems that I like the best are the ones that are a little more simple and very clearly just convey an emotion and a feeling. I think these are the things that are still understandable for a beginner like me. Like for example, I really like this one. To live is to love a great book commands, but love is not enough. The heart needs a little foolishness. For a child, I fold the newspaper, make a hat, and pretend to Sonia that I am the greatest poet, and she pretends to be alive. My Sonia, her stories and her eloquent legs, my legs and stories that open other stories. Stop talking while we are kissing. I see myself, a yellow raincoat, a sandwich, a piece of tomato between my teeth. I hoist our infant Anushka to the sky. Old fool, my wife might have laughed. I am singing as she pisses on my forehead and my shoulders. Okay, the last bit. <laughs> um, yeah. The beginning was nice. Welcome to another episode of What? I thought I'm gonna have a little bit of an experiment. So far, I've been reading these poems like one by one, really trying to pick them apart, trying to understand them. But I just read like about 15 of the poems, just right all after each other. I thought I'm just gonna keep reading them if I don't understand a bit instead of like lingering on it I'll just let it go and just keep reading and let like the emotions and the imagery just kind of wash over me and see how I like it then and not be too focused on whether I understand everything but be a little more focused on just kind of how it makes me feel and I noticed I really enjoyed that because it feels more like an experience like really just Kind of being swept away by all the beautiful words but on the other end i'm just scared that i'm missing something by not standing still by all the things that i don't understand i just really need someone to explain it to me like let me just read you another thing that i didn't understand like for example here this poem this is like the only poem can you see that this is the only poem in the book that has this layout with a kind of all jumping back and forth of all the lines. Why? I don't know. I thought maybe it's supposed to like represent some kind of chaotic energy, but this poem really does not have any more chaotic energy than all the other poems. So why is this happening? Why does it look different? What did the poet think when he was writing it? I wish to know. And then it ends with these lines. 
On the night like this, God's got an eye on her, but she isn't the sparrow. In a time of war, she teaches us how to open the door and walk through, which is the true curriculum of schools. Why is she isn't the sparrow? No, I understand that she's not a sparrow. Maybe this is some kind of biblical reference that I'm not understanding. I don't know. Or this one, which may be the most confusing one out of everything that I've read so far. He made her a newspaper head and squeezed his silence. Squeezed his silence. Like two pleats of an accordion. Okay, I, I understand that metaphor. And he played that accordion out of tune in a country where the only musical instrument is the door. So he's squeezing his silence. Not sure what the heck that's supposed to mean. He's squeezing the silence like an accordion, which is a thing that doesn't, is not silent at all. He's playing the accordion out of tune, so he's silent in like a different way than the rest of the country, because the rest of the country only has the musical instrument, which is the door. I am annoyed with myself so far. You know, right now I'm like 60 pages in, I'm almost towards the end. I would be at a point where maybe I would understand it a little bit more. But I'm annoyed at myself that I just don't seem to get it. And I don't really know what to do in order to do get it. You know, it kind of feels like I'm stuck. That it's just gonna be a like, you get it or you don't get it situation. You like it or you don't like it situation. If I wanna like it, if I wanna enjoy it, I don't know how to, how to get there. Like, I have so much respect for people who read poetry and really love it and really feel it, you know, and really have an amazing time reading it. And I'm just like, teach me your ways. I want to see the things that you can see. Am I blind here? Is there a switch that I can pull in my brain to understand the deeper hidden meanings of poetry? Where can I find it? There are a few parts of a few of these poems that I believe really exemplify the symbolism of the deafness for the resistance of against soldiers. For example, I am not deaf. I simply told the world to shut up its crazy music for a while. And a little later, silence it is a stick I beat you with. I beat you with a stick. Voice. Beat you. Until you speak. Until you speak right. This I understand. I understand the idea of the deafness as like an act of rebellion, a way to inflict pain on the soldiers. Nope, that's still wrong. <laughs> and tell them, we don't see you, we are ignoring whatever terrible thing you're doing to us. Or maybe I'm completely misinterpreting that, that that's entirely possible and you're all watching this like, Ebony, what the heck are you doing? You're definitely missing this and this and this, and you're completely wrong about it. That could be the case. Let me know. This one is a mood. I am mortal. I nap. Same girl. I feel you. Also, this dude really still has a very great time describing breasts. We try not to look at her breasts. They are everywhere. <laughs> Nipples like bullets. <laughs> a woman bends over to cover her coy knees, showing the audience of soldiers the burlesque of our cleavage. <laughs> I'm gonna try to finish this now. I only have like 16 poems left, so we're getting to the end. I want to finish this today and then we'll see how my mind has changed and how my world has evolved and how I'm now a more cultured, poetic person or not. I finished it. You know, reading poetry is one thing, but talking about it... Um... <laughs> I especially notice sometimes there are small passages throughout this entire book that I'm really enjoying, certain poems that I'm really enjoying, but I cannot really explain why. I make booktube videos, I make review videos, I talk constantly about why I like certain books, what I liked about the book, what could have been better, what I liked about characters or writing or plotting, etc. But with poetry so far, I'm a little bit at a loss. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I haven't really talked about the story itself. I'm mostly focusing for this video on how I'm experiencing reading poetry. It's still a tragic story about the war and it ends with the town basically surrendering anyway. You know, it's all about how life just keeps going on even though you are at war and you're still doing normal things like going to the dentist and making tomato salads. There's a moment where they say, gracefully our people shut their windows. 
to me that says you know besides being deaf the people are now turning a blind eye as well to the bad things that are happening in this war i'm glad that i read this this was a nice experience so i finished my first poetry book what did i learn my overall experience was I enjoyed myself, even though half of the time I was very confused. I did enjoy myself enough for all those times that I did really enjoy the poems and the spare moments that I was not confused. I was feeling pretty good about it. Uh, also, I still don't understand the purpose of most of the enters and line breaks. The purpose of the whole format of poetry still kind of confuses me. Maybe someone can explain it to me, maybe I'll figure it out if I read more poetry in my life. And the third thing is that I've been kind of thinking about like what sets it apart as poetry and not just a prose with a story. And I think what I noticed apart from like the format of poetry, the way it's told is just with a lot more metaphor and a lot more beautiful words and a lot more vague. <laughs> a lot more focus on the underlying messages and the symbolism instead of just the story itself. I am a big ball of confusion, but also a little bit of enjoyment. That's definitely there. I mean, I like language and I like thinking about hidden meanings. So that's definitely what I'm getting here. So future Naomi is here, just kind of barging in to give some clarification. I read up a little bit on the book, uh, for example, one thing that's good to note is that the author, Ilya Kaminsky, is himself hard of hearing and the real interpretation, this deafness, is not like I said, some kind of positive <laughs> metaphor for solidarity and working together and rebelliousness, it's a little more negative. First off, it's a symbolism for how the people are trying to shield themselves from all the negative things that are happening in the war, which which I did find out. But also it's a metaphor for how people are indifferent to other people's suffering, so they're like deaf to each other. So it's a lot more negative than I interpreted it. So maybe I was wrong, maybe it's actually my own experience that matters the most when reading poetry.